Uh, my first question, and I'll start with you, Colin, is uh, we know that Ontario's job market is not meeting the needs of employers, uh, workers, uh, job seekers, and despite the high, I mean, despite the qualifications that Ontarians now have, including newcomers, people coming in with post-secondary education, we still hear from employers that they don't find the right skilled candidates. So in your view, why do you think there's a mismatch? We know the skill, uh, there's enough in the talent pool out there. We know the skilled immigrants exist, or there's a highly trained tal uh, talent pool out there. Where do you think there's a mismatch? Is it awareness, or is it just people not uh, able to connect? Specifically, um, we deal primarily, uh, or in my role, in the construction sector. So. Um, in, in that sector, there seems to be a lot more partnership. There's a lot more um, uh, working together with respect to finding the skills, finding the individuals, the pool of labor, uh, the traditional pools of labor that employers will often uh, go to. And, and, and what is not happening is employers, uh, employers aren't reaching out to the non-traditional pools of labor, and that includes Aboriginal groups, newcomers to Canada, and may include women in trades, and may include other uh, other non-traditional sort of pools of labor that so for us as, as a trade union we can reach out to the communities we can come to in, uh, sessions like this which are very important to to create awareness that um, that there are individuals there are companies looking for for workers and there's individuals looking for work but then employers may come separately so uh, so labor and, and management and, and other partners community colleges college trades Everyone has to get together and start to determine where are those pockets of, of, of skill sets of individuals that, that can uh, do the work that is required currently and over the long term where we know there's going to be significant need and significant demand for skilled trades in, in construction and in other sectors as well. Well, right now I think our hospitality area where we have uh, cooks and bakers, um, we're having difficulty um, recruiting um, uh, people into areas where the, there doesn't seem to be an employer demand um, for the higher paid positions um, in um, chef as opposed to a cook, in baking as opposed to um, <coughs> other areas with, uh, within that hospitality industry. And we find that uh, most employers are now looking for uh, graduates of our two-year and three-year in degree programs as opposed to apprenticeship programs. And I think um, there needs to be more education on the part of um, whomever can do this uh, to let employers know that they can grow their own uh, managers from, from the ground up. But they don't have to necessarily go through um, uh, finding someone that uh, they have to retrain anyway uh, to match their own companies. Um, uh, style. <laughs> I think there's been a real lack of data out there because you know the colleges it can react to where the need is if they knew where the need was going to be and somehow we got to get a little more information there to we have the right matches because if you're going to have a, you know, a whole bunch of people that are going to be needed as a cook then you can anticipate that because you can't wrap up ramp up in a half a day at a college so we need to sort of have a better way of, of consolidating this information out there so we can make the colleges or other training programs can make some rational decisions. Like this came up on Monday. You know, it, it's about trying to match employers and employees. Where do you go? And, and I kind of said lightheartedly, and I, I sort of half meant it. I said you kind of need like a lap of life of employers here to, to really match up, you know, the, the employers and employees someplace where you can go uh, one person said, you need a one-stop shopping, you know, because otherwise, not just to, to look where this is going to be, because it, it's, if you're an employer, where do you look? Yep. I mean, it, it, it's, it's complicated, and you want to try to make it less complicated, because if you can match the skills with the need, I mean, we kind of solve the problem. So it, it's not something we, we can 
solve overnight, but that's one of the reasons why I think we've got to start getting groups, organizations, employers, training facilities all together. So we're all on the same page here and come up with some solution. And the most common uh, you know, challenge that we hear or the need that we hear from employers is a need for a gateway, <coughs> one single point of contact that they can tap into that provides them that standardized service, advice, and gets them connected with people that they need. And, and you know, endeavors such as this in that uh, step in that direction. But Karen, if I could uh, uh, bring you into the conversation, you know, this is more at a macro level, but in a more sort of uh, at an organizational level, given your experience working within organizations with people, where do you think within organizations are some are there a couple of departments, areas where the skill shortage is more compared to others? <clears throat> I just want to address that I don't believe there is a skill gap. And I may be one of the few ones. Um, and I want to address the audience. It's a shame that there are not more employers, but I want to ask you, how many of you think that we have uh, currently employees in our organizations that possess more talent, creativity, and knowledge than their current jobs require or even allow. How many of you think that? This is something I experience every single day. Uh, I believe employers should be out here. If they really have a problem finding skills, they should show the interest and they should be out in the community and they should participate at those events. So that's the first thing. Um, and for me, I believe it comes down that there is a tremendous lack of understanding human beings, especially when it comes to immigrants. Um, I believe that uh, there is a, there's simply a lack of cross-cultural understanding. So the recruiting process is done in a way that if I am, let's say, from Europe and I interview somebody from India, and I don't know that person, I judge their behavior on my programming from Europe or here in North America. You've highlighted or you've touched upon the point of you get the business case of the skills that people bring and how they can be beneficial to the economy as a whole. Colin, if I may just bring you into the conversation. We've also heard a similar sentiment from the, a number of employers uh, who get the business case of hiring newcomers, expanding the talent pool that they already uh, you know, not going out to, they just don't know how to do it. So in terms of that, what do you think needs to be done more? How do, how do we enable employers to tap into that uh, pool? A large majority of employers in Ontario are small business. Right. They don't have the time, they don't have HR departments, they don't have uh, communications departments. They are the single person um, employer, employee, and they do everything, right? So they're already tapped out uh, with respect to their time and their resources. So when they go looking for that the next individual to hire, they go to the easiest place possible and they don't spend the time. So employers, the large corporations, they can, they can get it. They do get it in some cases and they do hire. But how do we reach out to the small employer base who doesn't have time to come to this session, who is hiring that next journey person or the next skill trace person, but doesn't know where to go? So I think there needs to be um, an awareness piece and a some sort of process by which small employers in Ontario, because there's so many of them, know where to go to get that next talented individual that they don't have to train on the skill set, they don't have to train on the on the the corporate culture or the, or the organizational culture that they work in. And it's not only about finding a job where you fit in. People are not fitting into a mold, neither, neither should they. They are all unique and I, I honestly believe we need more authentic people in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Ralph, you want to add something? Before I pass to Ralph, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle here. <laughs> Sorry. But, but you know, Colin made a good point a while ago because there are a lot of small business, a lot of tradespeople are in their own businesses too. You know, you know, you see them around the plumbing business. And just before I pass it to you, because this is for the college. Um, one of the things that, when, and I'm a lawyer, so I graduated and I became a lawyer. And, and what the heck did I know about running a business and maintaining that business? And, and where do I go for advice about this? So colleges, I think, have a big role they could play 
in terms of these type of, of how to run a business for small businessmen who are tradespeople. And then not only that, but providing with continuing mentorship in these business areas too, because you might get the initial training, but then now I got a question about you know something to do with my business. Where do I go? And if we make it easy for them to succeed, and I think that's a possibility. So sorry, I'll Ralph, stop Ralph. interfering. And, and Ralph, uh, if you could get your perspective on this, uh, you know, the college's perspective. How do we enable the employers to tap into that talent pool? Who who get the keys? I mean. You, the one we know there's a huge, huge pool of employees we still have to make the business case with. But let's start by tapping into the ones that actually get the case. We don't have to build that case. So how do we reach out to those folks and what are some of the promising practices that you've seen? Well, one of the things that the colleges do is they have specialized programs for immigrants coming to Canada, um, whether it's a trade or whether it's another profession. And we do have graduates of these programs. So um, our job is to try and reach out to employers and let them know about these grads and try and connect with them. And uh, as David suggested, we need a bigger forum to do that. And I, I welcome that opportunity to, to work with other organizations to make that happen. Um, I think that's what a college can, uh, community college can, can do to, uh, to provide um, the trained people uh, that have the North American terminology and you understand a little bit more about the culture of the workplace. Um, and then try and connect with the type of employer, whether they're uh, small employers, large employers, or um, intermediate size. Um, I think that's the trick, that's, that's the key. I, I believe the challenge is also to reach out to parents because many times children may be interested uh, to learn something hands-on, but the parents say, no way, you go to university so I'm a lot out there in the community to educate parents and tell them we don't need more lawyers and accountants. They will not find a job. And the other thing is what parents have to consider if you study to become a lawyer or, con um, or an accountant, you can only do this in the country. But when you learn a skilled trade, you can go everywhere in the world right now because there is such a need. And then the other thing in manufacturing is uh, employers also have to be prepared to pay for the skill. I think many times they are not. And uh, you gotta recognize, you know, if you wanna ha have a no right, a trained one, you gotta pay the price for it. So, you know, I, I think Henry Ford knew back in the day that he had to pay the people enough that they would be able to afford a car. And so we have to go back to that again and think a little bit about social responsibility. And the interesting part actually yesterday, just somebody contacted me on LinkedIn and he said he's interested working with me because he looks at conscious capitalism, which I thought was amazing. Some companies really get it now that they have to change and that they cannot treat people like, you know, only bodies and not minds. The pragmatic part about it is you, if you go to the trades and do something you really like, you actually get paid while you're learning too, but you don't get out of it with tens of thousands of dollars of, of, of cost. Uh, and if you're going to do something, I mean, the community colleges, I mean, they're far more affordable too, and they give you the real technical education, and they work with the trades too. But just pragmatically to these parents, you can say, you know, here's an opportunity for your son, your daughter, your daughter, your son, uh, to get a tremendous education, to get a, a fantastic and well-paying job, and not end up in debt. And I think sometimes maybe that's the way we got to appeal to this and say, look, here's the practical element of this.